Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY weekend here aboard good old Athena. I miss my girlfriend Ava something fierce after flying back to Denmark last week, but at least my jet lag is gone and spring is in the air. That means the yard is slowly starting to get crowded, although it's not really that bad yet. There is still a ton of room here, but over the next couple of weeks we should see a lot of boats moving through here. That is a nice change of pace because that means I'm no longer the only boat here like during the winter. It's also nice that spring is coming because that means warmer temperatures. Warmer temperatures that I need to get started on all the massive jobs I've got planned for this summer. Looking at the forecast, that could be as early as next week. However, I would much prefer to have Athena moved into one of the sheds around here before I start on the big projects. Being out of the rain would make life a lot easier. Fear not, until I get all of that sorted out, there is still a lot of slightly less glamorous jobs and some prep work I can take care of. In fact, I'm looking at one of those slightly less glamorous jobs right now. Ta-da! A big pile of junk. Earlier this week, I started tidying up inside the boat and uh, this is the first load. Let's just start by getting rid of all of this. And just like that, all the junk is gone. Except that is not really accurate because there is still a lot of junk here inside the boat I need to get rid of. There are a couple of good reasons why I'm wasting time tidying up. For one, it'll allow me to work faster during the summer when I can more easily find my tools. And also next week, a Danish TV station is gonna swing by and do an interview with me. And I would kinda like for them to be able to actually see the boat instead of just piles of trash everywhere. Let me just go ahead and take care of the last bit of junk here. And then I can hopefully show you a somewhat neat and tidy Athena. It's a few hours later and I'm almost done tidying up here inside the boat. In fact, I think this lovely looking box might be the last thing I need to haul out of here. Most of you guys will recognize this box as the prototype for my new diesel tank. And I think we can all agree that it's a pretty nice looking box and throwing it out is a bit of a shame. But on the other hand, it has served its purpose and also spaces at a bit of a premium. Speaking of my new diesel tank, that should be ready in about a week or two, which I'm very excited about. I got some help with the technical drawings from an awesome guy here in Denmark, and I'll show you those drawings in just a few minutes, but uh, let me just go ahead and haul this thing out of here. While tidying up might not make for the most interesting videos, it is very fulfilling. And uh, in regards to Mount Trash here, my parents are going to swing by on Monday and help me discard of all these treasures. I'm gonna go ahead and call this good enough because although it still is a little bit messy down here and certainly dusty, this is about as tidy as Athena has been for the last two years. The biggest improvement is out here in the forward cabin where I've now got all of my stuff here separated into some groups. So there are power tools, chemistry stuff, painting stuff, sanding stuff. That's miscellaneous. This is all fasteners. And then there are hand tools over here. I wish I could come up with something better than the two buckets for hand tools, but uh, that's good enough for now. And then if we turn a 180 over here on that little table, there is all my safety stuff. I would much prefer not to have a repeat of last summer's big blob of epoxy in the eye adventure. So I figured I better put all of the safety stuff somewhere where it's easily accessible. I think we might need some of that safety gear in just a few seconds. But before we get to that, I wanna go ahead and show you the design for the new diesel tank. Like I mentioned, I had a little bit of help with these technical drawings. And by a little bit of help, I mean someone actually volunteered to do them for me. And the guy that volunteered has, I think it's like 20 years experience designing stuff in stainless steel. So that's pretty awesome. As you can see, the layout of the tank hasn't changed a lot, but there are a few tiny changes and I think we'll go over them once I've got the actual tank here. The tank is gonna be built out of two millimeter thick 316L stainless, and um, that's gonna make it a little bit heavier than the old tank. I'm not at all worried about that little bit of extra weight. The new tank is slightly smaller than the old one, and the extra diesel that was room for in the old tank weighed way more than the weight difference between these two tanks, so I think I'm good. And as far as cost, even going with that slightly thicker material, I'm still looking at way under a thousand bucks. And that includes some custom laser cut nitrile rubber gaskets for the access ports in the tank. I think this tank is gonna be pretty freaking awesome. 
I'll get back to the topic of the new diesel tank as soon as it shows up in about a week or two. Now let's move over here and take a look at the shiny, shiny stainless stuff for the rudder I showed you last weekend. I showed you guys these parts side by side last weekend, but I wanted to do that again because it's just so cool to see the old rusty, rusty ones and then the new spiffy stainless ones. But as you can see, the new spiffy ones here are not that shiny and that's because I told the guy that made these that he didn't have to polish them. I did that to save a little bit of money and also I wanted to see if that was something I could do myself. Most of these parts you won't be able to see unless you crawl into the engine compartment on top of the engine. Except this piece, because this you can actually see when you open up the aft cockpit locker. So I wouldn't mind if this was all nice and shiny. This is going to be another first for me. I've never tried polishing stainless steel before, but I've picked up some supplies. I've got some abrasive flap discs here and some polishing compound and the discs to go along with that. But uh, in the interest of not wrecking those stainless steel parts, I better just go ahead and try my luck on this piece of scrap from the old tank first. I've picked up three types of abrasive discs. There's a coarse one, a medium one, and then a fine one. And I've also got two different kinds of polishing compound and the felt or whatever this is, flat disc to go along with these. I think the first step is gonna be to see how abrasive each of these discs are. This is the coarse one, this is the medium, this is the fine one, and then this one is the white polishing compound. Apparently the blue polishing compound is for finishing it. But uh, yeah, you can see that is already pretty shiny. Now I wonder how difficult it is to get that surface to be that shiny. I don't know what this looks like on camera, but to the naked eye this looks decent I'll say. There are still some marks from the uh, fine abrasive I used on there but if I just keep going at it with this stuff I'm sure those will disappear. I know this is not perfect and that's okay this is just a test piece like I said but this area over here is already looking a heck of a lot better than this area over here which I haven't polished so yeah I'm excited about this. Off comes the training wheels. Now this surface is pretty rough, so I think I'm going to work my way through each of these flap discs to see if I can't smooth out the surface before I start polishing it. I think it's going to be difficult for me to get the camera to pick up the texture of this surface, but as you can hopefully see, I do have a little bit of work ahead of me. Fortunately, I really like that kind of work because I get to just pop in some headphones, listen to some music and just zone out for however long it takes me to get that surface smooth. I think I've basically gotten this surface as flat as I possibly can and it's starting to look pretty good so let's move on to polishing it. I think that is about it for the white polishing compound and it's starting to look pretty shiny. Let's go ahead and switch to the blue one. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. It is not perfect. I should have spent just a little bit more time with the medium grit flap disc, I think, but it does look pretty shiny. Let me see if I can give you guys a little bit better view here. Up here, it's very close to perfect, but then here there are some, well, barely visible abrasion marks and um, yeah, if I'd spent more time there, it would have been perfect, but this is certainly good enough, especially considering that this is the end result and this is the start. I am, of course, also going to polish the back of this, that's this side here, but I'm all out of the abrasive discs, so I'll have to wait until I can get my hands on some more of those. Now, like I said, this is my first time trying to polish stainless steel, so if you've got any kind of tips or maybe there's a better kind of abrasive disc I could use, well, if you've got any kind of tips, just go ahead and leave them as a comment down below. For now, this one just goes back into the pile of hardware. Riddle me this, which one would you rather have aboard your boat? The shiny one or the crusty one? I think this is gonna really spiffy up the engine compartment.
Polishing the front of this took around three hours, but bear in mind I am a complete novice, so I'm sure I'm gonna pick up a lot of speed. Like I said, one of my main reasons for doing this was to figure out if I could polish stainless steel to a standard that I would be satisfied with. And even though this is not perfect, I think the answer to that question is yes. And that is good news, because I've got this bucket of old chain plates I need to replace. I pulled these off the boat last summer before replacing the deck, and now that I know that I can polish stainless steel, all I have to do is to have these laser cut and then I can polish them myself. And that means replacing all of the chain plates is not going to be that expensive. Before I started I put down some paper, and I'm glad I did, because as you can see it's a little bit of a messy job. But other than the mess, there's absolutely no reason why I couldn't go ahead and polish the new chain plates myself, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. My mouth is still pretty sore after a wonderful experience at the dentist a little earlier this week. So I think I'm gonna give it a rest, but uh, I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning guys, it is Sunday morning. It's a fine morning, but it's a little bit of a frustrating morning. Frustrating because what I really want to do is to get started removing the hardware up on deck. So the grab rails along the cabin top and all the winches and the cockpit and stuff like that so that I can get the boat ready for paint. But I don't think I should do that until I've got Athena under some kind of cover. All of those areas that have hardware mounted to them are reinforced inside of the sandwich construction with some kind of wood, balsa or plywood. And by removing the hardware, I'm exposing those holes where that hardware is through bolted, and that means rainwater can get in there. Why so paranoid, you ask? Well, because I'm still having flashbacks to last summer when I replaced the deck. That was a lot of work. But uh, yeah, I think I should hold off on removing that deck hardware, at least until I know that I can be moved into a shed and have some kind of date for when that will happen. As much as I would love to just dig into that deck and start sanding and fairing and all of that, I think there is a good argument for just holding off until I've got Athena out of the elements. And besides, it's not like I'm gonna sit around twiddling my thumbs until then. There's plenty of other, less glamorous jobs to take care of. This would be a prime example of one of those jobs. These are the port lights. I removed them last summer before doing the deck replacement. And as you can see, they're dirty. And also there is a ton of butyl on them. And I will need to get these cleaned up before I put them back in later this summer. So let's do that. Getting rid of the dust on there was the easy part. Now there is the matter of all the butyl. One of the good things about butyl is that it'll stick to itself. So theoretically, I don't need to remove all of it, but this stuff has a lot of dust and debris in it. So I think getting rid of all of it would be the best thing to do. And certainly that is true for the little screws that secure the port lights too. Fortunately, getting rid of butyl isn't that hard. Enter stage left, Mineralsk Terpentin, or to you guys outside of Denmark, White Spirits. Let's just grab a quick little before shot here. I think we can all agree that these are pretty much fully butyl encrusted. Good as new. That was about a minute's worth of stirring that little plastic cup. Nah, I think all the threads are clean. Now I can put these aside and move on to the port lights. I can't just shove the port lights into a giant plastic cup and start swirling them around, so I think a slightly different approach is required. And that is going to be to simply just scrape off the bulk of the butyl and then wipe it down with some white spirits. This is a little bit time consuming. I think we can all agree that this is still a lot easier than it would be to remove any other kind of sealant. I've scraped away about as much butyl as I can, and as you can see, there's still a little bit left here, but thanks to the magic of white spirits, that is not hard to remove. And there we go, good as new. Of course, the inside of the port lights are also all gooped up, as are the little nuts that hold the two parts together. And that means cleaning this pile. Like I said, there are plenty of not so glamorous jobs on the to-do list. This is not rocket science, it's just a matter of pushing out the little nut, separating that, and putting these to the side. 
And I will just leave these to marinate a little bit. This was the last of the inner frames, so now there is just the port lights left. It took quite a bit of time, but I am done. That's all the port lights cleaned and ready to be installed, hopefully sometime in the fall. Tomorrow after work, I'm gonna pick up some bubble wrap and wrap the port lights in that so that no harm comes to them. As for the rest of today, well, I've got jobs that are even less glamorous than cleaning up butyl tape planned. And I don't think I wanna bore you guys with that stuff. So I think I'm basically just gonna end this video here. Now, hopefully by next weekend, I'll have figured out the shed situation or maybe the new diesel tank is ready so that I can finish the engine compartment. Either way, fingers crossed that I'll be able to come up with something that's worth watching. And that is basically gonna be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.